Hi there Notebook Gamers! These two puppies right here in front of me are the top of the line gaming machines from Asus ROG. And they are equipped with the fastest components Intel and Nvidia have to offer at the moment. While they both deliver desktop replacement wipes, giving their insane spec sheets, we might have to deal with proper with proper with proper chat engines under load here once again. What? I'm in the middle of something. Sorry mate, but these are actually almost quiet in performance mode. For real? Probably because ASUS limits the GPU and CPU to about 5 watts. Nope, 150 watts for both the 3080 Ti in this car and 150 watts as well for the 3070 Ti in this one. Okay, that's interesting. Exactly folks, you heard that one right. So while the SCAR 15 might be the most compact gaming desktop replacement rocking an i9-12900H and RTX 3070 Ti alongside 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM and a 2TB SSD, the SCAR 17 SE dials everything up to 11 and comes with Intel's latest mobile flagship, the i9-12950HX, a 175W RTX 3080 Ti 32GB of RAM and two 2TB SSDs in RAID 0. While the specs alone are mighty impressive, ASUS did a fantastic job with the cooling solution for these and gives you the option to either completely unleash both the GPU and CPU in turbo mode with some insane power levels or restrain the powerful Alder Lake chips slightly for very rarely tolerable noise levels while gaming in performance mode. Before we get to performance and our noise samples though, let's have a look at these two. Both are very similar in their design language, that is very ROG in its core. Some of you might prefer something a bit toned down, but if you are into RGB, the scars will definitely not disappoint. That said, with the RGB set to white, these can almost look clean, but with things like the UV reactive accents on the display lid of the 17 incher and the partly translucent keyboard deck, they cannot hide their gamer DNA. Chassis rigidity of the mostly plastic bodies is quite good, and because of its smaller size, the 15 inch scar has the edge here. It just feels a bit more compact and dense and has less keyboard flex than its bigger brother. Both display lids are aluminium and are rigid enough. We just wished for sturdier hinges to prevent screen rubble. Overall, the scars are well made, but they cannot match the perceived quality feel of something like an all metal Legion 7 or Razer Play. I.O. options for the ROGs are identical and good enough for such high end devices. On the left, you can find the audio combo port and two USB A 3.2 Gen 1s for easy access. On the back, you got your power connector, HDMI 2.1, 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet and two USB-Cs. One is Thunderbolt 4, the other is USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with DisplayPort support and power delivery with up to 100 watts. On the left, ASUS integrated a slot for their proprietary Keystone that allows you to transfer system settings and also includes a shadow drive to keep all of your favorite memes safe and sound. Wi-Fi performance for both models is impressive and absolutely stable throughout our testing. The webcam for these two is... Oh, wait, yes. ROG opted not to include webcams and rather sell you one at an extra cost. Our colleague Vaidi was able to test it with the SCAR 15 and while it offers decent quality, it isn't able to set itself apart from the usual integrated webcams. If it's better to have no webcam, then at least a bad one for when you really need it is something you have to decide for yourself. But I personally would rather see them included in the next generation. While you have to be careful when opening up the scars, since there is a cable connecting the RGB light bar to the main board, you got access to a pair of SODEM and M.2 slots. The internals also reveal the differences when it comes to the implemented cooling solution. The smaller SCAR 15 relies on a traditional heat pipe setup, while the SE reveals a massive vapor chamber across most of the motherboard. For a next gaming session or even for typing longer texts, the keyboards for both ROG laptops are very solid input options. While the 17 incher comes with a full numpad, the SCAR 15 has to make do with a switchable touchpad equivalent. While some users might not like the smaller arrow keys, overall tactility and travel is very solid and should hardly be a problem for anyone. The touchpads are both spacious and worked reliably during our testing. 
Widest Scar 15 comes with your choice of either a 300Hz Full HD panel or a 240Hz QHD variant. The Scar 17 SE we tested is equipped with a 240Hz QHD screen. All panels share really fast response times along with their very high refresh rates. Unfortunately, they all also lack a little in the brightness and contrast department and suffer from more or less severe backlight bleed that is sometimes even visible in darker scenes when watching movies or playing games. The QHD panels deliver when it comes to color gamut coverage though, with almost 100% for both DCI-P3 and sRGB, and a respectable 85% for Adobe RGB. While color reproduction is not quite up there for true professional color critical work, the panels are well suited for design use or video grading for web usage. In addition, games look much more lively and vibrant on the QHD panels. Alright folks, let's talk about the brains for these. Before we get to the absolutely insane SCAR 17, let us start with this smaller 15 inch. Usually the added costs for Intel's i9 options are hardly worth it. But since RG allows the high-end Alder Lake chip up to 135 watts in CPU-only workloads, the smaller SCAR is one of the fastest 15-inch laptops currently available. While the i9-12900H in the smaller ROG is sharing its 6 performance and 8 efficiency core layout with the mainstream i7-12700H, the new i9-12950HX in the SCAR SE is again taking things to another level. Not only does it add another two performance cores, it can also sip up to 160 watts in CPU-only workloads, putting even some desktop PCs to shame. As a side note, my colleague Andreas did the original written review for the SCAR 17, and in that particular unit the maximum power level for the chip was limited to 115 watts, making it hardly faster than your average i9. This was probably due to a software problem, because this puppy right here sits at the very top of the performance notebook food chain, alongside the MSI Titan GT77 and Lenovo Legion 7. With that much raw CPU grunt and very fast GPUs, generous RAM configs and high refresh rate screens, system performance for both of these is fantastic. Both laptops perform insanely snappy and without any hiccups during all sorts of different use cases from browsing the web to playing video games. I was also using the SCAR 17 as my daily driver for our video production, and it performed excellently for both timeline performance in Resolve 18 and speedy export times for our YouTube reviews. Speaking of YouTube reviews, if you like what we are doing here and you enjoy the content, please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for future reviews. Both laptops offer very fast storage solutions and the SCAR 17 is even putting two drives in RAID 0 for even faster initial read and write speeds. That said, both laptops cannot deliver stable performance over the course of our benchmarks and have to throttle drive speeds significantly. While this will hardly affect your everyday user experience, it should be something to be aware of. The SCAR 15 delivers admirably with its 150 watts RTX 3070 Ti. It might not be the fastest we ever tested, but it sits comfortably above the average in our database for the higher-end NVIDIA chip. The 3080 Ti and its bigger brother, on the other hand, is again trading blows with the fastest laptops we have tested so far. And while most of these have to be put in their highest possible turbo modes to access everything they have on offer, the SCAR is already delivering around 150 watts in its performance mode. And as we will see during our noise test, without the jet engine sound of some of its competitors. ASUS markets these as uncompromising hardcore gaming machines. And they deliver for sure when actually playing games. Both can easily drive their QHD displays above 60fps, even with ray tracing in most modern titles. For the competitive gamers out there, these are equally suitable. Once you adjust settings accordingly, you can easily get 150 plus FPS in popular shooters without any problems. While you have to make some sacrifices to visual fidelity with the SCAR 15 when gaming in 4K, the beastly 3080 Ti can relatively easily drive your external screen or TV in that resolution, especially with the help of DLSS. While we all kind of expect gaming laptops to be powerful and loud, ASUS actually may prove us wrong here. While the SCAR 15 is good in its performance mode and very average and along the lines of the competition in its turbo mode, it is actually the bigger and more powerful SCAR 17 SE that really surprised us here. 
For gaming, it doesn't really make sense to use turbo mode, since the performance gains are marginally, because of the high power levels the GPU can access even in performance mode. This results in very moderate noise emissions for both game and content creation workflows, actually allowing you to use the laptop speakers for in-game audio, enjoy your games without annoying your loved ones, or using this as your gaming console and still be able to use your sound system in your living room. We prepared some noise samples for you, so you can get an idea yourself. Speaking of a different kind of noise, both laptops actually offer a decent speaker system. The soundstage is rich and even delivers some low frequencies, and overall you can easily enjoy some in-game audio, movies and music with these two without a problem. When it comes to battery life, the SCAR 17 has to obey the laws of physics and has to yield to its powerful hardware with only around 4 hours of video playback or web surfing. The smaller 15-inch sibling, on the other hand, actually delivers quite impressive runtimes despite its powerful core components, with around 8 hours in our Wi-Fi test. Alright folks, let's wrap this up. With the SCAR series, ROG isn't beating around the bush with what these things are made for. First and foremost, these are high-end gaming machines and boy do they deliver in this regard. With powerful core components and solid I.O. options, fast displays and good inputs, gaming is insanely fun with both of these. While that much performance usually comes at the expense of fan noise, ASUS even managed to rein in these beasts in this regard, and is almost able to deliver a quiet gaming experience. With that much CPU and GPU grunt, generous system memory and large SSDs, these two are even well suited for power users that can ignore or appreciate the more gamer-oriented design. Especially the larger 17 is a great machine for video editing for example. There are of course some drawbacks and both of these aren't cheap devices of course. But if you are looking for a high-end gaming notebook, definitely put these two on your shortlist. Please let us know what you think about the scars, and if you liked our video and felt entertained, please do not hesitate to give us your like and your subscription. This would be it for today, thanks a ton for watching. My name is Alex, you have been absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.